Ladies and gentlemen, today we are brought by Cannon. He is a good friend of mine and friend of the channel, and we have done videos together before. And today I'm going to talk to him about why he quit Diablo 4 and if season four can pique his interest to be playing the game again. So I'm kind of curious as somebody who had played the game and stopped playing the game, why, Cannon? Uh, the game was boring. Just flat out, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's the video. <laughs> the video. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> the shortest video okay. of all time. That's it. I mean, let's be real here, Darth. You are really good at delivering like very straight to the point, no bullshit videos. You know, I felt like I had to like follow in your footsteps there, you know, help you deliver that. That's great. So. That would be that would be a wrap then. Did you what was the level you got <laughs> to when you stopped playing the game? Did you get to hundred? <laughs> I did, I did, I did. And I did, did you, get to 100. Did you play any of the seasons or you quit in preseason? Okay, so I actually didn't. And to answer your question seriously, um, a lot of people actually call me out on this because uh, they're like, oh, Canon, man, you were saying it was so good. You told me you were saying it was like an 8, 8.5 before the release. And I was like, listen, listen, pal. When we got to only play the beta test for the first 30 levels and had no idea what the end game was going to be like, I, I, I stick to that statement. So did a lot of content creators, by the way. I think I, think I remember Asmin giving it like a, like a seven or Everyone eight. Liked Almost every Everyone liked it in the beta. Everyone liked it in the beta. There's no in the beta. It was, it was solid. And I, I even made a review video out or preview video out saying that it really just it, a lot of this depends on the end game. Let's see, let's see what happens. And I know you, I think, I don't know if I, I think you had access to the pre-build, right? But a lot of the people that actually had access to the pre-build before the game came out, uh, they said that their experience to level 100 was sped up and it was just a lot more enjoyable and they were not expecting it to be even grindier. If I, if I remember that correctly, forgive me if I'm misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that that's what they had told me uh, because they were also saying it was pretty good, you know, like before the game came out, it wasn't as grindy. So, you know, the game obviously came out and for me personally, I, I really do like the, uh, the combat and the classes. I love the open world element to it. There's a lot of things about Diablo 4 that I genuinely do like, but I would say that I Overall, after hitting level 100 and experiencing the entire game at launch, by the way, pre season one, uh, it just wasn't. It, it was overall boring. It, it was really it was. I felt game, like was it boring to level 100, or once you hit 100, then you started to like fall off your enjoyment. Both, I would say. Okay. Um, the only thing that I enjoyed at the end end game was doing Lilith. And yeah, I was good. doing it on a non cheese build, you know, um, I wasn't super geared. And then, of course, later on, pe some people were like one shotting it, doing some crazy things with some crazy builds. But, you know, assuming that that, that wasn't the experience for me and if assuming that that wasn't the experience for you, I, I honestly thought that fight was fantastic. And, and that I, was I, my favorite remember, part out of all of all of the yeah. game actually was fighting Lilith. It took me 11 hours to be there and I did it on Necromancer. I did do it with Bone Spear, Ooh. but I was also not mm -hmm. geared. So I wasn't like skipping phases or whatever. Right. Um, and for that reason, it was actually like kind of rough. Um, but the the buildup of trying to learn it and dodge the waves and then slowly piecing yeah. your gear together, that was those actually, hit, yeah. Those wave hitboxes were freaking massive. I heard they they adjusted the hitbox of the wave, but, uh, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the Lilith fight. But right when you got, I think right when you got to like around level 50 ish, it was literally the same shit all the way to 100. And it got to the point where I was like, when am I going to hit level 100? And I know a lot of ARPGs are like that to a certain degree, especially, you know, when you hit 90s plus like last epoch, for example. No, but fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I remember I remember watching uh, like it was Shroud was doing the race to 100 and I'm not much of a racer. So I was more watching from the sidelines of that stuff. And, it, you mm -hmm. know, all anyone was doing was resetting either Champion's Demise or I forget what the other dungeon was. Yeah. And just killing the pack of yeah. elites and walking out and resetting it. And it did. Yep. I remember people even back then when the game was just launching saying like, this looks like some boring gameplay. Like what exactly is happening yeah. right here? Yeah. I, I wasn't a big fan of that. And then when I got to end game, I was looking forward to like challenging, you know, us try, trying to see how far I can go with the Nightmare Dungeons and, and Lilith and all that stuff. And like that was... That was pre I ended up only enjoying the Lilith fight. And then to be perfectly honest, as a content creator, I had another big game that was coming out and I was kind of in between whether or not I should 
cover that game or stick with uh, Diablo 4 and continue I to mean, ride it out. kind of bored of the content anyway, so... It, exactly. So I, I pivoted, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, Vince. So with Season 4 coming, have you looked into it at all to see any of the changes that are coming? Uh, I talked to... I saw Dat Mods. I went to Dat Mods' stream, and he was testing the PTR, and he was telling me some good stuff. He was saying that he uh, he liked some of the changes, and then I did watch a couple of your videos uh, because I'm a big Darth Microtransaction fan, Aww. and it seemed pretty positive. And, you know, I know you're not a paid actor. You say it how it is. So I was like, okay. I mean, everyone's kind of saying it's pretty good. But more importantly, if I'm going to be completely honest, bro, it's a timing thing. Um, it, like I'm an MMORPG content creator that has dipped his toes in the ARPG space and would like to continue to do so. That's why I went pretty hard on last epoch when that game launched. But, you know, as a MMORPG first content creator trying to get into ARPGs, there's like nothing going on right now. Right. Like, <laughs> like. The uh, Lost Ark had a big raid, very True. challenging raid with Theamine, and and that pretty much ended. Um, and for me, I'm kind of trying to figure out what sounds fun. I mean, of course, I'm going to continue to play games like Lost Ark and um, and Throne and all these other games that I'm kind of preparing for. But uh, but you're in the spot. Diablo you got a minute. Pretty enticing. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. between. There's stuff, not much going on. Something to do. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing the RPGs do kind of make nice which is that there tends to be like each cycle or season or league depending upon which game mm -hmm. we're talking about here all seems to be going in the off time i am curious to see from somebody like yourself who didn't really play all of the seasons and you got bored in preseason you're going to try that right we, we did a video together on your channel earlier and you were saying you're going to be trying it out it sounds like you're going to be trying it out so the itemization changes the new additions to the bosses the greater rifts out of these additions that are coming to the game. Is there anything there that you're like actually excited to try out? Like which of these does pique your interest outside of on board and there's nothing else to do. Is there anything that would be a poll to make you come back? Honestly, the mention of new uniques that I haven't seen, uh, that is a little bit enticing for me, but the fact that I don't know anything about it going in, and then I'm hearing that there's new stuff, you know, and the itemization has been adjusted, the crafting. That's honestly what excites me. The fact that I kind of don't know going in, which is kind of weird, but... So you're kind of looking at yeah. it as playing Diablo again for the first time almost since they're reworking yeah, everything? to a certain degree, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking forward to like going around finding all the altars and stuff again, but... <laughs> I don't know if that's been changed. You don't have yeah. to do that again. Yeah. It carries over. Once you've done it in one of the seasons, it's going to carry mm -hmm. over into all of them. Although I guess yeah. you didn't play the seasons. But I didn't play the seasons. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know if it, launch, yeah. I don't know if it carries from Eternal. I think you have to do it once in the season, so you might actually end up having mm -hmm. to do that again. But with the uh, itemization changes, the game is going to be playing significantly right. different than it was before in the past. So the Greater Rifts also. Did you like Greater Rifts in Diablo 3? I did. Uh, it felt kind of competitive. I like challenging content and greater rifts, even like the, the higher skill nightmare dungeons kind of looked fun. Um, just anything that's challenging for me. Look, it sounds pretty good. Speaking of which, is there any competitive aspect to season four? So in season three, they had the gauntlet leaderboard that was added to it, which was the competition style. I actually forget mm -hmm. whether or not they're bringing that back in season four. I guarantee you somebody in the comments is going to know. If they do bring that back, then that is the only official sanctioned competitive stuff outside of uh, like PvP, I suppose. There is mm -hmm. the new bosses. You say you like challenges. So there's the new like mm. Uber Uber bosses, which are the new level 200 variants. And actually they, sent, they said they cranked them up a little bit. And then on the rifts, it goes up to level 200 as well. And they also up the difficulty of the rifts since the PTR. So there is going to be more challenges to it. There is no, however, competition or leaderboard or something around these challenges. So if you're wondering like who's done the fastest level 200 rift or something like that, they don't have that in the game that's what their gauntlet basically is mm -hmm. um so outside of that no not really in from a competition form it would only be personal challenge like lilith for instance when you're doing lilith so there will be more stuff like that but not from like an actual leaderboard placement style of it do you 
Do you get as much enjoyment from individual challenge or do you kind of have to have a leaderboard associated with it? How much do you actually care about the in-game leaderboards? Uh, man, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I like both, right? The, the fact that there are new Uber bosses, I would say that's, that's up there too. Now that you mentioned that, um, the new uniques kind of sound fun. Like I love making builds and trying to be creative with my, with my own character, but I also like challenges. So the idea of having new Uber bosses that I've never really seen before, that sounds really fun. So even if there is no competitive aspect to it, I think that would be, that alone would keep me engaged enough to want to try and, you know, clear it on stream. But having leaderboards as well also, you know, would be pretty good, would be pretty nice for me. They've reworked a significant amount of the game too. So it's going to feel kind of different. Like the defenses have been reworked since you didn't play the other seasons. Like now resistances actually do something. Armor's basically capped in 9,230 mm. as well. So those defenses has been oh, changed. Wow. Gear itemization always drops a 925 power level from level 95 plus monsters. So you're not going to have to be digging through as, as much of the items. I don't know how much you know about the actual itemization changes and all that, but basically both offensive and defensive has been more or less completely reworked since your experience in preseason. Mm -hmm. So you gotta let me know. Maybe we'll do a recap video and let me know what you thought about it after you actually tried out season four. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I nerded out with everything, with D4 preseason, like with all these builds and the itemization and all that stuff. So, uh, I mean, the fact that you're saying resistances <laughs> is a thing now that's, I'm like, really? Huh, they listened to Crip, huh? <laughs> like, I remember watching his video on the resistance and whatnot, but yeah, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. I'm down, man. I'm down. So one last question for you before I send you on out. I'm I'm curious, you did play Last Epoch also. In fact, you were you were ranked like the second level one hundred hardcore, right? Uh for for rogue, yeah. Or if, it was called rogue, right? Yeah, for yeah, rogue, rogue. For rogue, yeah. Okay, so in your Behind time... Behind Rudy, Rudy got me. <laughs> so playing Last Epoch as compare, compared to playing Diablo 4, you obviously stayed more in Last Epoch than you did in D4, right? I did. Um, it was kind of crazy because I'd never played hardcore before, and I told my community about a week before Last Epoch came out, I was like, hey, um, I think I'm going to try to do a hardcore level 100 race when they do it without any experience and very little experience on the game. So I had, I, I kind of like hardcore, no life it for about a week before. And then after when it launched, uh, I just nerded out. I, I really liked a lot of their gear progression and I really liked the class that I played. So for me, the class that I play has to be fun for me, right? Not objectively good, I mean, obviously it has to like perform well, but it doesn't have to be objectively good. It just has to be very fun for my own personal, uh, for my own personal preference. And the same goes for MMOs as well. And in that game, the Blade Dancer, the way the class was designed was, was very fun for me, which is another reason why I really liked uh, Diablo 4 in the beginning, because the, the build that I played in Last Epoch was very similar or reminiscent to like a Twisting Blades Rogue, which was always my favorite build for, for Diablo. I don't know if I'm going to do Rogue this time around. Um, if peop, if, for, peop, for those of you who have followed me through D4, you'll probably know that I'm more of a Rogue player, but I'm kind of leaning towards maybe like a Necro or a Barb this time. Uh, I, I really like melee, but generally speaking, ARVG's melee is really punishing. So um, yeah. Yeah, well, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But Barb's typically pretty good in D4, at least. So if you try that, you'll you'll be fine. Yeah. So I am curious, though, because you played the hardcore and you were asking about competition side of it. There's one other thing I didn't think about, which is hardcore has changed in season four. So now hardcore oh. no longer has your cheat death elixir. They've completely removed oh. it out of the game. And actually the amount no, no. of escape scrolls that you get is reduced as well. So uh, hardcore is basically hardcore now. So if you are actually interested in that, it would make a much more interesting level 100 yeah. race than it ever has previously because now anyone can die basically at any time. Yeah. I never... I, like, when when they... When, when, when Diablo 4 first came out and they had that cheat death elixir, I was kind of like... 
I'm like, ah, that's like, what is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it, it felt more like micromanaging. Like, like it felt more like it wasn't a hardcore experience, but it became hardcore if you failed to micromanage like a pot. That's actually I mean, it true. Was a pot, right? Yeah, that's basically what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't a, I wasn't really a big fan of that. Well, so, it's gone. But that's good to hear. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. So hardcore is actually hardcore now. So you think about playing hardcore if you come back? And what class? Is, oh, you said they, me. Yeah, I think I will. I, I think I will. It depends, bro. It really depends. I, I right now I am leaning towards it. Okay. Um, if they have some kind of race, I think I'll be really leaning towards it. But we'll see. I do have a it good friend much, of mine. The racers pretty much almost always do something every season. Yeah, They're something trying to race every the season, right? I mean, there'd probably be something yeah. for you to. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to go hardcore or not. Or sorry, hardcore as in like, right. you know, try to race. Yeah. Uh, I probably will do hardcore though. I think I, I I do see myself doing it, but I need to do some homework first. So maybe I play this game. Maybe I'd like, I'll join you on your stream. <laughs> maybe I can, maybe I can mooch off of your knowledge, man. Uh, I don't have a crazy amount of knowledge. Play. I've been one of the more chill, like casual players out of basically all the yeah. people I'm not a blaster. I never do the races or anything like that. I just kind of play the game okay. and have fun with it. I don't actually know if I'm going to play hardcore this time because everything's been reworked. So there's a pretty good chance uh -huh. of having bugs maybe that are like one-shotting you or something like that with no uh -huh, cheat death uh -huh. elixir. So I'm thinking uh, this might be the one season I actually don't play hardcore just to wait and see what's going on with the bugs, et cetera. And right. I kind of want to see the Uber bosses and make sure that's all balanced. Cause now yeah. defensive and offenses are both rebalanced. So I'm not really sure, but that's the thing with D4, the Uber bosses is like, one of the biggest things that I, one of the biggest incentives for me to play D4 in the beginning during preseason was the pinnacle boss, right? Lilith. And for me, I didn't even think about playing hardcore because I knew that I would, probably die to that boss i was like once i beat that boss maybe i'll go back and do it hardcore but um with this new season of hardcore as much as i want to do the hardcore experience because it was super fun last epoch i i i really want to do the uh the new uber bosses and I mean, it'd be kind of smudged to get there at end game, <laughs> try it once, not know any of the attack patterns because I'm doing it blind, and then I insta die, insta -die. and then there it is. Yeah, you know, like that's oh kind of what God. I'm thinking too. So I'm probably gonna be a soft core Andy for this one. Well, we'll find out. We'll see exactly yeah. how fun it's gonna be. I guess my character's not even able to log in right now. But thanks for thanks for coming on the old chat today to figure out if you're yes, gonna, you're gonna try 100. So season four is 100. At least giving you the try it. Yes, sir. That I mean, Blizzard. You should thank this man. I watched his videos. Otherwise, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't oh, that's my fault. It. Don't put that evil on me. I'm the one. That was you all you. Uh, that I was broke all up. you. Go check out Ken, and we just did a video on his channel as well. You can find the link down below. I'll put the channel there. Any last comments, shout outs, anything you want to say before we? End uh, the video? Yes. Uh, Darth Microtransaction. He streams live on Twitch. Definitely right, go check him go. out. Give him your primes. Give him your primes. They're completely Canon free. XO and on Twitch. <laughs> you can go to Canon XO on Twitch. All right, bro. Thanks for coming by. I'll All see right. you next time. Thank you for having me, brother. See ya.